right. Hey, everyone. How's it going? It's your brother, Noah. May God bless you guys in Jesus' powerful name. And in this video today, I'm going to be testifying of how the Lord delivered me recently. The Lord delivered me last week or the week before the beginning of last week. Either way, I got full on deliverance. It wasn't just yawning or burping or spitting. I, Yeah, I got a full on deliverance. And I want to talk about how the Lord first uh, convicted me of something and what kind of led up to that. Um, just so nobody misunderstands, though, you know, I, I believe by the grace of God, I, I know by the grace of God, the Lord has me walking in a life of holiness. Um, you know, as the Apostle Paul said, I live a life with a, with a clear conscience. So praise God for that. Um, but nevertheless, at the same time, I do want to talk about this testimony today because I believe it'll be beneficial to many of you guys. And, you know, it'll be a really good encouragement and warning to keep ourselves from idols. You know, um, there's one minister, you know, that I like to listen to. And he said something that even though we're regenerate, we're born again, there's still something within us that has the tendency to just try to turn anything into an idol. And, uh, well, we know what that anything is. <laughs> it's the enemy. It's evil spirits in the flesh that are, you know, tempting people. And the, the book of First John talks about this. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. And although we're regenerate, we've given up a life of sin um, as born-again Christians, the enemy can tempt us to turn things that seem neutral into, you know, an idol. Um, so anyways, I, I just want to give a little backstory for those of you who don't know my testimony of salvation. It includes me um, seven years ago, or yeah, somewhere around then, having gotten lost in the woods. I got lost in the woods and I practically almost died that night. And, um, you know, I had to walk seven hours and 11 miles while running from the cops home. And, uh, you know, even actually, I want to share this with you guys. Um, my, my mother's granddad was um, in World War II, I believe it is. I don't know if that chronologically makes sense. But yeah, yeah, her, her granddad, yeah, has to be, was in World War II. Anyways, he was in an aircraft flying over Italy fighting against the Axis powers in World War II. And his, you know, aircraft got shot down and he actually survived the uh, landing. And he literally had to hide out in Italy and like, you know, be taken in and hide until he could get rescued because he was behind enemy lines and he literally had to hide. But at one point... While he was, you know, um, hiding essentially, um, he actually, or while he was going to seek refuge somewhere, he got shot at uh, by the Axis powers. And, you know, he had, a, he had a, a dog tag on, like a metal tag. I think I'm using the term right with regards to uh, that tag that you have on when you're a part of the military or U.S. military for your identification, right? And he got shot at. And literally, the bullet hit his dog tank. Is that not just the grace of God, you know, on, on Christian's bloodlines, right? The grace of God on my bloodline uh, to get, he, you know, if it was like a couple centimeters one direction or the other, he got, a, a got shot in the heart in the, or in the chest and died. But anyways, he was like, you know, in this battle running like in the wilderness. I don't know if he was literally in the wilderness, but the same thing happened to me. Obviously not with me being in the military, but when I was running from the cops, I just, I just find that as an interesting correlation with regards to, you know, how the, the enemy tries to generationally work through spirits in a similar way to try to attack somebody in a bloodline, right? But anyways, aside from that, I just wanted to give that backstory on my, uh, on my salvation testimony that the Lord, you know, pulled me out of the, in the cold, in the wilderness, um, and maybe that'll make more sense as to why I'm sharing that uh, further on in this testimony. But the next part that I wanted to uh, talk about is a while ago at some point, I think I started watching it and then I stopped for a while. There was a specific kind of content um, that I started watching on YouTube. Um, you know, and I'll get into the point of, I'll get into some additional point later, but I'll just tell the testimony for now. Uh, with regards to climbing mountains, with regards to not just climbing mountains, but specifically mountaineering, hiking, intense mountaineering. And, um, you know, with that being said, I'm, I, I'm already, I already want to clarify 
that it is not inherently bad to watch this kind of content. It's, it's not even inherently bad to do, you know, different kinds of hikes, even if they are um, intense or physically testing. So I'm not trying to, and my testimony, you know, my deliverance was powerful. I, I almost got to reel myself back in and be like, okay, no, that, that doesn't mean therefore these things are inherently bad. So I'm not, actually, maybe one of the reasons um, why that's the case, I, start, I started watching one of the, th this content is because that's one of the main things to do around here where I live in South Dakota, um, you know, is, is hiking different, uh, different places, right? Not as though there's that much of intense hikes around here anyways. But I started to watch this content and it slowly started to, I, and I, I, I more so started to watch, um, which I guess is kind of inev inevitably the case when you watch this kind of content, mountaineering. Like I'm talking about even people climbing hills like in Mount Everest and you know, it was, it was kind of interesting with regards to, you know, the difference in elevation and how that affects people. But, um, these stories started to turn into that. I was watching like disaster ones, like things ending in a, in a not good way, like, you know, catastrophes that happen. And I guess in my mind, I could say like, oh, I'm watching that. So I know, and I actually, you know, did learn things of what to watch out for. If you are in the cold, if you are mountaineering or something like that. Um, but yeah, it, it definitely turned into an idol to, to start to watch this content. And, uh, like I said, you know, a lot of it started to turn into, um, content that was like of a morbid nature that when people would go on these hikes, there would be a disaster or a death or something like that, that, that would happen. And, you know, when I, when I, when I would watch this content, I would feel a little bit of fear, right? I, you know, you think to yourself as a Christian, and I'm going to be getting into this, like, okay, I know I can't watch blatantly evil things. I can't watch worldly music videos. I can't, and not as though you should want to. I mean, you shouldn't even want to as a Christian. If your heart is in the right disposition, uh, you, should, you should not like those things. But my point is, it can therefore be easy to justify seemingly neutral kinds of content, uh, but then you start to idolize it, right? Um, you know, I noticed the draw to just, you know, want to watch this content um, yeah, yeah, too much, right? Even though it's, there's nothing in the Bible that would say like, you know, word for word that it's sin, right? Anyways, as I would watch this content, I would feel a little bit of fear in me because, you know, I, w I would watch it at, at night when it's quiet in the house and there would, there would be some subtle fear of like, you know, having watched those stories and there would be, uh, you know, it, you know, obviously looking back on it is kind of starting to open the door to fear a little bit. And, um, yeah, anyways, I, uh, I would, I would watch this content and, um, you know, I even felt conviction at a certain point to stop watching a certain, uh, YouTube page with regards to this. And I did. And, uh, you know, I didn't necessarily take that probably in, in, a, in a prideful way, in a not humble way, as conviction to stop watching this content altogether. So anyways, fast forward, um, you know, there was one night where I actually had my wife and I watch some of this content together. Um, and it wasn't always like, you know, morbid necessarily, uh, per se, like this one that I was watching with my wife, um, the, the person just, you know, had to survive in Alaska and they, they made it out safe and were actually re able to rebuild the situation. But um, that night, actually, um, you know, there was some spiritual attack that started to happen, I would say, as a result of like the, comp, you know, the, the, um, the combination effect of like starting to kind of idolize this content and watch it too much and maybe even watch it in general. And, you know, with the best that I can recall with the details, I think, um, I think my wife just went to sleep. She didn't necessarily, Emily just uh, went to sleep. She didn't feel spiritually attacked. Um, but I stayed up a little bit later than her uh, that particular night. And, um, you know, I, I think I was watching that content afterwards as well, too. And I, and I felt some fear. And I think I even felt convicted by God, like, you know, to stop watching this content. Unfortunately... I, 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 you know, or I just felt that fear, right? I felt like a subtle or maybe even becoming a little bit more of an overt fear. And I was just like, um, I just, I just went to sleep. But shortly after I went to sleep, I can't remember how I, I, I think I just woke up. I think I was seeing something in my dream that was kind of irrelevant. 
and I woke up and I can't remember um, what caused my, my wife to wake up. I think she was like moving around or something like that. But anyways, um, I talked to her when she woke up and she said, Noah, are, are you on a rock or something like that? And my eyes just got like wide, like, what do you mean a rock? And then she was just like, yeah, are you holding on to a rope? I'm like, what are you talking about? A rock and a, and a rope? Like, and in my mind, I'm like, man, this is very much correlating to the content that I'm watching. And I, at that point, I just took it as, okay, this is an indefinite sign that, you know, um, I need to stop watching this content. I have, you know, to some certain degree, you know, been in idolatry um, with regards to this situation and and I need to, to stop. And I think my wife, I, I woke her up because I was just like, okay, that is way too much. That's total, uh, totally spiritual right there that she, and I'm like, what do you mean by that? And she's like, I don't know. It just made sense to me. And I'm like, yeah, well, I know why <laughs> I'm thinking to myself. I know why you were seeing that, right? I believe as, you know, revealing from the Lord in her dream that, you know, I need to, uh, yeah, not watch these, uh, these YouTube videos anymore and that it is starting to open a door to, uh, to fear. But anyways, yeah, she had awoken at this point and she was saying that she, you know, was feeling like some kind of spiritual attacks, right? Can't remember specifically how she worded it. Maybe a little bit of fear. Um, you know, I think maybe even something that she ate was contributing to her not necessarily feeling the best in that moment right there as well, too. And she, she asked me to pray for her. And I think even pray a little deliver, or you know, maybe just pray for her in general. Either way, I was praying for her. I was binding the enemy in Jesus name. And obviously, you know, the Lord was using the prayer and, and, and everything like that. But I just felt like, you know, a blockage. I just felt a spiritual blockage at that point because there was definitely, you know, a, a, a spirit manifesting, trying to block me, trying to attack me. And I was praying for her and I just didn't, you know, sometimes you could pray and you, and you don't feel it, right? Like you don't really feel it, but you still are fine to pray. For some reason, it just felt like there wasn't that much effectiveness behind the prayer. And I was still feeling fear. And it's like the combination of the fear and the blockage was just... Yeah, um, there, there was just, yeah, fear attacking as well, too, I would say, between the both of us at that point. And, um, you know, she went to the bathroom um, after I prayed for her. And at this point, I'm just repenting. I'm saying, God, please close the doors to the enemy. I repent of watching this content. I renounce the fear. God, I'm sorry. He just made it abundantly clear to me that in this area, I was in error. And I'm just like... God, I repent in Jesus' name, just crying out to the Lord in full repentance, like, what have I done? Like, the Lord was, you know, giving me some subtle warnings with allowing some fear to start to attack and, and conviction. Um, but then at that point, it was just clear of like, okay, you're headed in the wrong direction and idolizing this content. And I was just repenting. And um, my wife my wife came back um, and when she came back, I asked her to pray deliverance for me, right? Because I, I'll just describe it like this. It felt like liquid fear in my body at this point. The fear that I was feeling um, inside of me was, it literally, that's the best way to, that I could describe it. It literally felt like internal liquid fear. And we as believers could battle attacks from anxiety at different points, but this was definitely not the worst fear that you could ever, ever experience, but it was definitely like, yeah, it literally, like I said, that's the best way I could describe it. It felt like liquid fear in my in my body or in my blood or in my, you know, something, in my soul, I guess you could say. And um, I asked her to pray deliverance for me, and she was like, what did you say? Like, there was something totally trying to block her from um, her even hearing that request. Like, she literally could not hear what I was saying. And looking back on that, obviously, that was a spiritual attack because... The enemy didn't want me to get delivered, and God was leading me uh, to get delivered. But anyways, um, yeah, eventually I just asked again, like after a while, can you pray deliverance for me? And she started praying deliverance for me, and essentially the moment that she started praying deliverance for me, 
I was manifesting, I was growling, I was shaking my head back and forth, and just, yeah, like having this um, growling that was definitely not human in nature, nothing of my will, and uh, a spirit was manifesting in me, and it came out. It came out like pretty, pretty quickly within a couple minutes. So praise God for that, for the Lord's mercy and for his work. And I believe he even uses, you know, stuff like this to lead us to the place where we need to get, where, where he delivers us, you know, where we confront something that is with inside of us and, and that he delivers us. You guys who, who go through deliverance, you, you probably already know that at this point. But anyways, aside from the point, um, the Lord showed me like part of the face of the spirit. It was like a dragon or, or something like that. I saw it manifesting in my mind's eye while my head was shaking and uh, I coughed it out and I just felt so much peace. You know, like I had been praying, I had been repenting and I, I was genuinely repenting and that was a good thing. But I was just walking around with joy. Like I just felt such a weight lift off me. I think there was maybe like a tiny bit of residual mental um, anxiety attack afterwards. But I knew that I was delivered and that spirit came out of me. And uh, yeah, I got delivered in Jesus' name. And I was going to say this at the beginning of the video, but I forgot. But when we say a Christian can have a demon, this is not excluding ministers. You know, ministers are human beings with flesh, just like every other Christian. Uh, ministers have a specific calling from God. In some sense, everybody's a minister. But when somebody's like in a public uh, position of ministry, um, yeah, I mean, they, they have a, you know, a certain calling from God, a certain grace to do that ministry, but they have flesh. Think about Paul. He said, the Lord is faithful to deliver me from every evil attack. He said that he has an angel of Satan in his flesh sent to buffet him. Anyways, this is a video to those of you pretty much who already believe in deliverance. This isn't a video of me trying to convince people about, can a Christian have a demon? Uh, but it is a video to say a couple different things of like, you know, uh, ministers don't think that, you know, you couldn't need deliverance from a certain kind of spirit. I believe, you know, it's, it's and the Lord didn't confirm this to me for sure, but the, the reason why I brought up the thing about my great granddad and then, you know, me getting lost in the wilderness is, you know, there could have still been like some kind of spirit with association to attacks of death, with association to, it, um, you know, like being lost in the wilderness or whatever that was kind of drawing me in the direction. And, and a spirit that might, I, I don't believe a spirit came. Actually, the Lord kind of showed me a window in the spiritual realm that the enemy was trying to open a window through the situation. But I believe that it, it did not because the Lord did that work in me, convicted me and delivered me before it got to that point. So praise God for that. Praise the Lord for his mercy in Jesus name. Amen. I mean, yeah, praise God for his mercy, guys. That's all, that's all that I could say. Um, but yeah, I say this for a couple of reasons. On, uh, another one is don't idolize um, content on YouTube. And, uh, you know, this isn't me by any means now with having given this testimony, saying this from a high and mighty place. But yes, it's very easy. Uh, when you're a Christian, you say, I don't watch worldly movies anymore. I'm not going to listen to worldly music. I'm not going to watch, you know, um, anti-Christian content. I'm not going to watch content surrounding fornication and, you know, um, ungodly things and drug use and promoting a worldly lifestyle. Um, but you could still idolize something. Um, you could still definitely idolize some content that you're watching. And I'm not trying to keep condemnation on anyone. Will I still, you know, be open to watching content that is neutral, that is not exclusively Christian? Yes, I don't. That's obviously not inherently a sin. We can watch content, you know, um, that helps us in, in the things of life, learn wisdom, learn skills about life, learn things about nature, um, you know, even some kind of like... Uh, entertainment or like a, a little date that you do with your your spouse or you know it's it's not bad to have us you know a certain degree of uh of entertainment right um depending on your usage and definition of the word entertainment but yeah like if you watch you know um 
uh, people outside cooking or, you know, many different things. I hope I don't really have to prove this to, to anyone that that's inherently a bad thing, right? But, um, yeah, let's just see if there's... Oh, and the Lord gave me a scripture um, after I got delivered. You know, I just prayed to the Lord and said, God, please show me that, you know, everything's okay after this situation. And man, I wish I could remember the scripture that he gave me. That That's why, guys, I got one of these right here, which, oh, it just fell. I got one of these right here, um, a journal, you know. I do try to write in it frequently, at least every month. Um, you know, things that the Lord has done in your life, specific things. Um, I, I, I think it's really beneficial to write down what God is, is doing in your life. Not as though that's like a necessarily a requirement, but just as another kind of spiritual exercise. I feel convicted by God to write in it when there's something really specific that he does or, sh or shows me many times. Um, but anyways, there was a scripture that the Lord gave me. Um, you know, and I, and I was just so comforted, you know, I, I was just, I think I even shed up maybe a couple tears of joy and I was just like, thank you, God, just so grateful, uh, to God. And the problem with, you know, never admitting a fault as a Christian, never admitting, and I'm not talking about like blatant willful sin, Christians should not be living in perpetual willful sin, but if you act like there's never an area where there's some flesh that you battle um, you know, you're not going to have this testimony of being grateful to God for how he delivered you. You're not going to have this testimony ever of being grateful to God of how he protected you, how he had mercy on you. I mean, like throughout your Christian walk and yeah, just so many things that you won't be grateful for. And actually, you know, that pride is going to make you become more sinful and fleshy uh, long term rather than humbling yourself before the Lord, right? Um, but yeah, the Lord gave me a scripture and I was just so, so happy about that. But yes, guys, totally watch out. The Bible says, little children, keep yourselves from idols. You might say, I don't watch worldly music, any, uh, listen to worldly music anymore. I don't do this, that, or the other thing. But you still got an idol. You're, you're idolizing some person. You're idolizing some form of content. And is it a bad thing to become very invested in something that you want to learn about? No, that's not a bad thing. Could you systematically invest in something as a Christian that you want to study that is not exclusively um, Christian? Yes, most definitely. That's why you need to have discernment. That's why you need to be led by the Holy Spirit. And this isn't like a what. This isn't me trying to tell everybody stop watching non-Christian content or don't watch content about hiking and nature and things like that. That's because you need to be led by the Holy Spirit and 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 follow the conviction of the Holy Spirit, right? Um, but another thing. With that being said, this is a perfect time to say this. Actually, with that being said, um, I I am convinced that. A lot of the times when, when people want to go on these big mountaineering trips and they want to isolate themselves or even do it in a minimalist fashion and, you know, risk, risk themselves. I mean, you know, prime example in uh, the desert when Jesus was being tempted, um, the devil tempted Jesus to throw himself off a cliff, you know, and Jesus responded and said, it is written, you know, thou shall not tempt the Lord thy God. Um, this is definitely something that I want to bring out of this testimony as well, too, is do not tempt God. Do not tempt God with things that are risky. So with that being said, when people isolate themselves, when people, you know, do these intense mountaineering things, um, that, that can definitely be demonic. That can definitely be demonic. I mean, these mountains in the Himalayans, um, many of them, you have to have a Sherpa, which is like, uh, you know, uh, a, a guide from one of those countries that helps you get up the mountains because their lungs are more, um, adjusted to the high elevation. Um, they literally bring you through pagan rituals, like to try to appeal, you know, and a lot of the people that actually, um, do a lot of this extreme mountaineering, they literally refer to mountains as like, as though they're like a, a spiritual being as the, so you got a, a combination of that people start to like idolize these mountains like a god and also there is a lot of that 
pagan um, kind of superstitious belief associated with uh, with false gods um, within within this uh, type of situation. And like for example, to climb Mount Everest, I, I can't back this up one hundred percent for sure, but I heard that it's actually and I you know. Um, I've seen where people have to actually, I mean, not as though I would like sit through watching a ritual like that, but where people actually have to, you know, watch or they have to go through a ritual with those Sherpas in order to climb up the mountain. Like they literally are not allowed to do it unless they pay homage to these, uh, these false gods, you know? Um, so that just tells you some of the demonic, uh, outlook. And I hope this ministers to many people cause I haven't really heard, uh, a minister talk about this topic before guys but yeah big takeaways is don't idolize content that you think is somewhat neutral take that with a grain of salt of course as well too because i'm not going to the other extreme and trying to make people feel condemned when they shouldn't but at the same time if the shoe fits and god's convicting you then then be convicted <laughs> allow that conviction to come another one is um yeah, just be aware of that. When when people want to isolate themselves and push themselves to the point of dying and risk their lives, um, it's it's pride, it's uh, flirting with death. Like some of these people actually, you know, love to flirt with death. Like they get an adrenaline rush after uh, by pushing themselves to the brink of death. But when you're born again, there there shouldn't be a need to push yourself to the brink of death. There shouldn't be a need to want to do that. And think about it. I mean, um, Jesus said, when an unclean spirit goes out of a man, it goes wandering in dry places. Now, I believe there's various interpretation to what people think dry places means. But one valid interpretation is like isolated pla places, like, you know, uh, deserts that are very extreme, mountains that are very extreme, very isolated places. Um, and, and with that being said, once again, am I saying... You know, it's inherently bad to live in an isolated place or to go on a hike alone. No, that's not what I'm trying to say. But there's definitely spirits leading people to isolate themselves, to push to the limits, and to just, yeah, be in that state where they're isolated. And, you know, um, I, I don't know exactly how to describe it right now as I'm trying to articulate it, but I think there's some kind of demonic pull to just be alone like that and i'm not saying you know once again take that with a grain of salt hopefully i don't have to hopefully you guys have the maturity to understand the context wherewith I'm, I'm making these statements many times i know there's babes in christ who also watch these uh videos or people that are in the flesh so i like to frame it in the proper context but anyways guys that's pretty much what i wanted to say i think those are some of the big takeaways and um yeah, I mean, I don't know if anybody needs this confirmation at this point, uh, if you've been following this ministry for a while, but and a, a, on an anecdotal experience, you as a Christian um, could still need deliverance. I mean, if, you're, if you follow this ministry for more than a week or more than a couple of days or an hour, you, you probably already realize that. But yeah, I wanted to share this testimony to encourage you guys in those various ways. Uh, today, I'm doing a lot better. That fear is not attacking me, and um, you know I'm I'm not being uh, you know pulled to idolize and, and watch that content. So uh, those videos with regards to you know mountaineering and um, extreme situations or catastrophes that went on with regards to that. So guys, um, praise God for the Lord's mercy. You know He's doing a work in us all. He's He's faithful to finish the work that He has started, and. Um, you know, we need to take heed to what God is doing in us. We need to take heed and allow him to deliver us, right? So that um, it doesn't actually turn into something where the enemy can open a door in our lives, right? So God bless you guys in Jesus' name. I'll talk to you next time. Amen.